Hello, good evening, everyone. Once again, my name is Ali Hamedi, working with TechMill on their futures webinar series. This evening, we will be discussing uh, the commodity uh, within the agricultural sector, corn specifically. I hope everybody's doing well and has had the last uh, the last two weeks have had have done well within the choppy markets. Uh, before we get started, the markets are off to a good start today. We'll see if that continues throughout the day uh, with everything that's going on. Uh, as we get started in tonight's webinar, uh, discussing corn, uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, I like to keep things informal and a conversational perspective, uh, and we'll go into further detail uh, discussing what the outlook is for corn specifically. Okay, here we go. Uh, as we know, corn is an agriculture, uh, within the agricultural sector. We discussed wheat two weeks ago, and uh, they are very similar, but corn is more versatile than wheat. At the time of uh, putting the chart together, uh, earlier today on, uh, through TradingView, the current contract for July 2022, the corn futures contract is trading at 607. As we speak right now, it's down off of that level. It's trading now at, at 596.40 uh, and dropping. Okay, that's the July 2022 contract. And where we are with the for December, we'll come back to these later in the in the uh, webinar after we look at what forecasts and analysts have to say about corn into the rest of the, this calendar year and into 2023 and beyond. Uh, 2022's contract at the time of putting this together earlier today was trading at 604.20. And one year out from now, the July 2023 20, uh, contract was trading at 610. So this goes back to, you know, getting back to earlier uh, in the first part, the first, let's say, nine webinars of discussing what uh, constitutes a futures contract, what types of curves we're looking for, price is where the, uh, where the current price is, lower or higher than where the futures price is, gives you an indication of where the curve is going. But we're going to get into further analytical details and some of the research and data that's been put out for corn uh, this year looking forward. Um, like a number of commodities, corn prices are driven by supply and demand factors largely dominated by U.S. agricultural policies according to the USDA, that's the United States Department of Agriculture, and the U.S. is the number one corn exporter globally. Other effects on the supply side include the seasonal factors on outcome of harvests, beginning of stocks of corn and yield stocks, meaning you know, how much stockpile, how much do they have, uh, let's say, saved up. Uh, demand factors include industrial use of grains and the animal feed and for human consumption, as well as supply side effects in foreign countries affecting export demand. So to talk about now is the use of corn, on the supply, or sorry, on the demand side, and at the same time, the export factors of the countries that are importing it uh, for their needs. The price of corn has skyrocketed this year since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and has and has stayed elevated as fears that the war would increase food insecurity largely came to pass. The price has been as high as more than thirty percent, hitting above $8 at the end of April 2022 and closing at 765 by mid-June 2022. So um, once the invasion started, obviously a lot of things increased in price within the commodity sector, not only uh, on the ag side, but as well as uh, the energy side uh, and raw material side. Uh, they have come down since then, uh, as we'll see later what uh, other institutions and research uh, firms have to say what their outlook is, but they have cooled down a bit. As you can see now, it's trading uh, currently at 597. So they have come down off of their highs. 
Uh, the U.S. and China are responsible for more than half of the world's total corn production, with Brazil, EU, and Argentina being the, uh, the other big producers uh, globally. So uh, Ukraine, when we get into the Ukraine specifically, because it's mentioned within the geopolitical tension, uh, is the eighth largest global producer. And according to the USDA, Ukraine's corn production for the marketing year 2022 and 23 is forecast to be 25 million metric tons, which is down 41% from last year. So to keep that in perspective, a 41% drop year over year is very significant, uh, but we know why. Uh, due to the uh, invasion and the ongoing uh, crisis between Russia and Ukraine. Um, another big factor that we have to factor in when it comes into the ag side of the commodities um, is weather. Now, research from the S&P Global Institution showed that dry weather is expected to force U.S. corn contraction. Contraction means tightness. Uh, down in 2022 and 2023, adding to the pricing pressures. Uh, when they when they say adding to pricing pressures, that means it's going to be forcing uh, the price upwards. Uh, in the long run, corn is expected to, to decline as a result of the climate change, according to NASA, which yields forecast to drop 24% by 2030. So what they're saying now is they have you know, NASA has all of this, uh, let's say, technology uh, and uh, uh, satellites and weather predictors and, and so forth that they put in their AI, and it calculates a simulation of data. And what they're saying now between now where the price of, of corn, uh, not the price, but the where the corn is being yielded at, what they're being able to harvest by the year 2030, due to all of these calculations and the weather forecast that they're predicting, um, there will be a 24% decrease by year 2030 in what the corn will be able to yield and what that's production wise and what they'll be able to use for consumption as well as uh, export to importing countries. That's a very important factor to keep in mind. From Barclays, uh, Barclays, their research noted that there are difficulties that are, have put upward pressure on corn price predictions. They highlighted that the Russia and Ukraine uh, crisis combined represent one of the world's key bread baskets, accounting for approximately 25% of global exports. With supply chain disruptions, meaning them not being able to get from point A to point B to a, whether it's uh, sanctions and or here, the closure of the Black Sea, which I put in parentheses, uh, much of the global supply could stall for as long as the conflict continues. Now, this dramatically impacted the price within the European market corn prices, and they have been up more than 30% since the war began. So here again, we'll be able to see uh, contraction based on geopolitical tension and supply chain disruptions. Uh, and sanctions due to be uh, countries that are producers of the, the commodity and being able to get it from point A to point B to the importing countries that need it for consumption, uh, uh, human consumption and or other needs such as cattle and feed and et cetera. From CRM Agra, uh, corn markets risk coming under pressure as harvests loom. Uh, but this is far from a fully bearish market. The drought impacted Brazilian crop is likely to drive additional new crop demand to U.S. markets. Now, China has continued to purchase U.S. corn with, and with every purchase, the U.S. stock decreases. So uh, Brazil's uh, weather, uh, keep in mind, they are in the Southern Hemisphere. So uh, for us living in the Northern Hemisphere, when it's summer, it's it's their winter and vice versa. Uh, they had a, a rough seasonal drought that uh, produced the amount that they could harvest and uh, end up exporting. Uh, now, China, on the other hand, uh, even though they are one of the major global suppliers of corn and producers of corn, uh, they've been purchasing U.S. Uh, corn uh, for 
their own reasons, which could vary for uh, a very number of reasons. And each time uh, anybody is purchasing from the US, it's decreasing their stockpile, putting more pressure on their harvest season and the amount of corn that they're going to be able to stock and yield for the upcoming months. Um, now from feednavigator.com, uh, they were saying that corn prices are expected to trade at historically elevated levels for the remainder of this year and into 2023, according to some UK analysts. Uh, due to the war in Ukraine, the dryness across parts of Europe and the Americas alongside the protectionist measures being taken by governments to secure supplies, CRM Agri raised its price forecast significantly on the Chicago board uh, for corn uh, on uh, by Q4 of 2022. So here again, we're going back to one of the variables that nobody has any control over, which is weather. And it, it has affected not only the US and Brazil when they say the Americas, North and South America, but it's also affected parts of Europe, which they are important uh, producers as well, specifically coming out of Russia and, and Ukraine due to their conflict. And then you also have China in the mix as being one of the major uh, exporters of the commodity itself, purchasing from uh, US, putting more pressure uh, on the demand from the US harvest itself. Uh, this is coming from the United States Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Cong Cong Congressional Budget Office. Uh, the USDA's projections released earlier this year in February suggested nominal corn prices could fall from 480 in 2022 and 23 to four dollars by 2026 and 27, and then remain stable uh, at that level through 2031 and 2032. Now. Keep in mind that this is a very long time frame for them to come out with this type of prediction. And uh, more recent corn price forecast put the average price for the current market at $6.75. So here they're trying to tell us based on their projections back in February. Now keep in mind what was going on in February, there was no war uh, between Russia and Ukraine. This is why I've put this in here just so that you've got to make sure getting back to what I've discussed and uh, across all webinars is doing your research and being able to track historically, uh, not just from a technical analysis, but also what's happening on, uh, around the technical analysis of whatever it is that you're looking at from a futures contract, whether it's in agriculture or energy or, or any other specific sector. Uh, but here you could see specifically when they came out in February, they were looking at the $4 handle uh, for the rest of this year going into next year. And then by 2026 and 27, it even dropping further. And they're going out even further to say that, you know, uh, by 2030 and 31 and 32, that they expect it to stay in the $4 handle. But here we see it currently as we speak right now, it's uh, trading at, 597. So uh, you, you can see the discrep not discrepancy, but the difference in timing of when reports actually happen versus variables that are out of control and uh, not knowing what can happen in the foreseeable future. Now, the Congressional Budget Office in their report uh, of uh, May in 2022 uh, gave coin a price forecast of $6 for this year. Now their corn price forecast for 2025 suggested the price could fall down to just below $4 at 395 and slumping further to 390 in 2030. So also this report, even though it's come out after the, the, uh, the geopolitical crisis between Ukraine and Russia and the supply chain disruptions uh, uh, with getting corn from point A to point B, they're also going out to 2030, and they're also still forecasting right along with USDA close to the $4 handle once we get to the end of this decade. So that's just more for information for you to uh, digest, to look into, and uh, look at where it's been historically uh, when it comes to uh, good weather versus bad weather seasons and harvests 
geo prior geopolitical tensions because this is not the first time we've seen geopolitical tension in, in our time uh, within the history of humanity for that for that uh, matter uh, keeping in mind that the United States is 247 years old uh, you know the corn is one of their if not the biggest uh, commodity within the ag sector that they produce so they've been in and out of geopolitical tensions throughout their history and they've also had their fair weather or, or I shouldn't say fair weather but fair share of weather uh, conditions good and bad. From tradingeconomics.com uh, corn futures extended their decline now this is going back within the time frame of off the peak when it was just above eight dollars declined to 730 per bushel in mid-July which was just a week ago uh, the lowest in over five weeks so that's the lowest it's been in five weeks prior to this week now and uh, tracking a, a broad decrease in agricultural commodities as, as investors have digested new data from USDA's supply and demand report. Now corn is expected to trade at 905 spot 69 uh, bushels uh, uh, USD per BU by the end of this quarter, according to global macro models and expectations. Now looking forward, they estimated to trade close to a thousand, a little over a thousand in 12 months time. I'm going to increase here the graph that they have put to support what they're referring to. And here's where you can see where it's currently trading, which is right on the dot pretty much. It's at 596 as we speak now. So call it 600 and 12 months time they're looking at it moving up to to a thousand. Now this is their forecast. Um, are they going to be right or wrong? Only time will tell. But there are are significant other, uh, let's say, uh, reports and research analysis that you'll see later in the upcoming slides that will provide uh, more data to support, you know, the contraction and the demand as that would support a price increase in corn itself. This back into the screen. Now, this is from growintelligence.com. Um, uh, US corn uh, stacks already, uh, the stocks, sorry, not the stacks, stocks, uh, which gets back to uh, their, their stockpile is what they're referring to. Uh, already, the lowest in eight years will shrink further in 2022 and 2023. Uh, that means there's going to be more outflow than they're going to be able to stockpile and save. Uh, that will fuel further, further price increases in a broad range of food products. Now, uh, the U.S. farmers intend to plant 4 million fewer acres of corn this year because of the soaring, soaring increasing fertilizer costs. The low planting intentions, uh, in, intentions number would mean a smaller corn harvest this year, even if growing conditions are ideal. U.S. corn total sales commitments are currently the second highest in history, and new, uh, and new crop sales remain strong. So they're still seeing a very strong uh, demand for the commodity. Uh, they are decreasing the amount of harvested area to harvest and plant for corn due to the increase in the raw materials that are needed to help uh, increase and, and produce the commodity itself. So due to this inflation, if you will, uh, they've decided to lower their cost on the harvesting and plant side, even though the, the, the demand is still there, and they still have a, a strong commitment from, from importing uh, countries. Uh, December corn futures prices are posting new contract highs, 
U.S. corn ending stocks for the current year, stocks again, meaning the stockpile, uh, are forecast at 36.6 million tons and grow predicts for 2022 and 2023 ending stockpiles will decline by double digit percentage, meaning there's going to be a significant uh, outflow, uh, more than they're going to be able to harvest and, and stockpile and save. Now, the impact of higher corn prices is, luck, is likely to be broad-based given its versatility as it touches a large number of products. Now, I mentioned this earlier. Um, we're talking about not just human consumption, but you're also talking about uh, for even for ethanol, uh, you know, uh, energy, you're talking about for cattle itself and hog as, as animal feed, as well as human consumption. And it's a broad range of uh, and varieties of products that human consumption uses corn, uh, the commodity for use. So um, the impact of these higher corn prices uh, is going to hit you know, importing countries, consumers individually like ourselves uh, with higher prices. And uh, mentioned here, this in turn will have a higher price effect on the products that corn is used for um, across the whole board. So if you're, if you're looking at this from a big picture and you, you all of a sudden see that they're not going to be harvesting or planting as much as they had been in the past, you know, four million uh, acres—that's <laughs> a lot of land. In, in that, they're going to—they're going to decrease. Uh, that's going to significantly affect the amount that they'll be able to stock, knowing that the demand is still there. So they still have the commitments for sale. So there's going to be a higher sale price, uh, regardless of profit margin. We're not discussing profit here. We're talking about the sale price. So if you look at it from this context, in theory, the price of, of corn will continue to, to increase. Um, Brazil suffered severe yield losses to drought and Argentina's yield is stabilizing from early season dryness. As a result, this puts US in a good position to gain additional export sales. So even though the US is the number one uh, exporter uh, for corn, globally, uh, other, I don't want to say competitors, but other uh, producers, major producers uh, globally, i.e. Brazil, they had a rough weather season, as did Argentina. Now, Argentina, they say, is somewhat stabilizing, uh, but due to those two countries having a rough weather and harvest season, um, it's putting U.S. at the forefront for more demand which will therefore decrease their stockpile, which will in effect increase or should increase the, the price of the commodity as the importers continue to buy it for their needs. From agweb.com, um, the, their price action, their December, what they were referring to here, the December corn futures increased um, over a quarter point to six uh, spot, 23.50, which is up 16 cents for the week and the contract's highest closing price since end of June of 2022. So we're talking roughly almost three weeks ago that you know it was, it was reaching its highs. Their 90-day outlook, the inflation trade, uh, I'll get to that in a second, uh, faded recently as crude oil and other commodities have tumbled, which means they've de declined in price which could generate pressure, especially from, from speculators. Continuing signs of soft export demand could limit the price upside. Now net sales uh, for 2022 and 2023 commitments totaled 111,000 metric tons, which is down 36% from the average of 172,000 metric tons for the previous four weeks. So what we're talking about here, the inflation trade, uh, the whole market knows inflation is in the United States at its highest in 40 years. Uh, interest rates, it's projected that next week the Fed will increase uh, at least 70, or the market's factoring in an increase of an additional 75 basis points. 
Um, I've seen some reports that they could even increase it 100 basis points, but we have to wait till that till they release that data next week. Now, uh, now that inflation is factored in, knowing that there are supply chain disruption uh, issues, knowing that there is geopolitical ongoing geopolitical issues, this is what they're talking about. This has faded. It's 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 been all factored in to the market to where we sit right now. And this is where the speculation or the speculators are coming in to say, okay, uh, now that it's factored in, where are we gonna place or hedge our bets? Do we wanna go long or do we wanna go short? Um, if you wanna speculate on this particular commodity itself. From cnbc.com, um, even prior to the war, agricultural commodities were seeing some upward pressure amid supply chain disruptions and high transportation costs that are con contributing to inflation throughout the economy. Now, drought in the Western US and elsewhere in the world has driven prices higher. We've already discussed that. That's been an issue throughout uh, the world for the, the, uh, the uh, global suppliers. In addition to global supply concerns hitting the the ag commodities broadly, corn has also a potential source of additional demand. Now this gets back to its broad base of use. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not very uh, uh, finite in its definition of its use because it has a broad range uh, for use. Uh, the US President Biden and his administration, uh, they have temporarily allowed the sale of higher ethanol gasoline over this current summer of 2022 in an attempt to offset rising energy uh, costs. Now, uh, for those of you that are connected to the United States and or have uh, relatives or friends living in the US, you will maybe have heard them discuss uh, the higher gasoline prices. Now, this is what the administration is currently uh, allowing is for more ethanol to come into the market to try to offset and lower the gasoline prices uh, across the states. And one of the main ingredients, if not the main ingredient within ethanol, albeit is corn. Um, so that's another one of its uses and broad, uh, in broad terms. If you look at their chart that they hit here from CNBC, um, you know, from April, uh, which uh, the war with Ukraine and Russia started end of March or in March. So this is post-war. Uh, you can see that the price has come down a bit, but they are still relatively high. Okay. And the, the, the title of their chart here is price of corn hits nine year high. And it floated here, like we said earlier at eight fourteen. it was eight spot 14 per bushel. So it was hovering around 800. Now it's dropped down to, according to this chart, by July 18th, it was above $6. And now it's trading at you know, $5.96. So it's still about right where this blue line trend uh, is at the moment. But the picture, the overall picture for the price on corn is an increase in pricing trend. Uh, the key takeaways for the market overview now, We've had overwhelming, uh, I don't wanna say evidence, but research and data showing that demand will always be there for corn. Supply is there. The major exporters, i.e. America, have decided to limit how much they're going to be planting and harvesting due to inflationary reasons because of sourcing the raw materials have increased in price, which has become more expensive for them to plant and harvest it. Uh, but the demand, that doesn't mean that if they're gonna be producing less that the demand is going to drop, it's going to give a contra effect and the demand will always be there. It's just going to end up costing more. So, um, you know, as we've seen from various anal analysts, the corn market is seeing supply demand issues driving prices higher this year and heading into 2023. And then you couple that with weather and geopolitical unknown variables, because we don't know when Ukraine and Russia will end up stopping uh, their conflict. Um, it could be uh, long-winded and could go on for some time, or it could 
end up you know, stopping overnight. Nobody knows. And the weather variable is out of everyone's control. Keeping in mind, you know, you've got northern and southern hemisphere uh, exporters at play from Argentina and Brazil and the southern hemisphere and all of the other major exporters uh, and producers of corn in the northern hemisphere. Even though a rise in demand is present and needed mainly from the importer side, the supply is not as available due to them planting less, just as I mentioned, and the harvesting numbers are forecasted to be lower, putting additional pricing pressures on corn. We just discussed that. Um, and once again, we always, before taking a position, now, I can't assume everyone is, is invested or within their portfolio um, has positions within agriculture. But if you're going to speculate and you don't have a position uh, for hedging reasons and you want to speculate on this particular commodity itself, um, you've got to do your research. And you know, there's a lot of it out there. Uh, this is a larger corn is a getting back to its use has a broader range of use than other commodities. You know, gold is gold. Okay, we understand what gold is, um, and it has. I don't want to say limited in scope, but it's got its scope and uh, parameters set, just as the other metals, uh, platinum and and silver, etc. Uh, energy, oil, and gasoline, same. Um, wheat falls into corn uh, as an ag, but corn has more use than wheat uh, from its from its variability. So you've got to do your research if you want to take a speculative position. Uh, you've seen where forecasts are are headed. You've seen where, and I'll go back up here to the price on December's contract at the time of this was at 604. It's trading now at 598. And, you know, one year from now, it's at 610. Um, based on all of the data that we've discussed, uh, providing where the supply is going to be somewhat limited, supply chain uh, disruptions, uh, due to being able to get from point A to point B are still uh, in play. And at the same time, uh, the uncontrollable variable of weather, which had an effect on uh, South America mainly this year, as well as in the US on the Western side uh, with the drought um, forecast have put it as an increase for its outlook in price. Now, is this uh, this is not advice to say, okay, go buy uh, and be long. Uh, this is, there's a lot of data out there uh, and a lot of data is supporting what we've discussed in this webinar, that there will be a contraction in the supply. The demand will always be there forcing the price to move up, but that's no guarantee as to uh, if and when that will happen. So always know that nothing will ever happen according to your specific time frame and your needs because that's what you want and that's what you're invested in. Uh, and if you do take a position in corn uh, within this commodity uh, with futures contracts, know how to protect yourself, which we've discussed uh, in, in the previous webinars, learn how to hedge, you know, set your target, your stop losses, uh, your, you know, if it starts moving uh, in your favor, uh, know when to take your profits off the table, regroup, take a look at the new data. Where is the new data uh, forecasted to be? You know, as we as we approach, you know, we're in midsummer in the United States. That means we're in midwinter in the Southern hemisphere. What's the forecasted uh, weather forecast, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you, you see where I, I'm going with this. And you've, you've got to stay on top of your position uh, at all times. Um, is this, a good commodity to speculate on. Um, that's for you to decide. And you know, in my opinion, what I'm looking at is it's a common denominator as a necessity, uh, and it is used globally for a number of purposes. So there will always be demand for it. What will happen with the price? 
Well, it mainly depends on the variables that I just mentioned, weather and the geopolitical tension. And due to inflation in the United States, are they going to be able to keep the interest rates uh, in check, uh, so inflation in check with rising interest rates? We, we don't know that. We're going to see how the market reacts uh, next week, even though they've priced in 75 basis points uh, rate hike, uh, in addition to what they've done previously this year. Um, if they increase higher than that, how's the market going to react? What's their forecast going to be for the remainder of the year to keep inflation in check? Um, if inflation continues to stay stable and or creep up and the rising interest rates um, are really not putting a dent or, or, or doing what the Fed would like it to do to bring down inflation, then that's going to only continue to uh, provide higher prices uh, for the raw materials needed and it could cause further contraction uh, for the upcoming harvest seasons, which once again would, would provide a uh, price increase on uh, the supply, on the supply side, which means higher prices for the demand, the buyers and the importers. Um, as always, I like to end with a comment. Uh, returns matter a lot, it's our capital. Now, this is a general statement, I mean, this is coming from the CEO and president of Fidelity Investments. Her name is Abigail Johnson. Um, why I put this in, in context is it's your capital, regardless of what sector, what commodity, what type of futures portfolio that you, you have or you're going to build, you're going to speculate or hedge with, and even regardless of futures contracts, what type of investment portfolio you have currently or want to start building, um, capital is capital and it, it and the returns matter. So this, you've got to, again, do your research and be very careful and aware of the surroundings of the position that you wanna take or that you're currently in and understand the trend of the market within the sector that you are investing in. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna open it up for any questions right now. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to send them. Uh, I'll be more than happy to, to answer best in my best of abilities. Any questions? Going once? Going twice. All right, I will be back with everyone uh, next week um, on Market Outlook uh, with a different uh, commodity within the futures options. Um, if I recall correctly, it's, it's not agriculture. It, it may be interest rates if I'm not mistaken, but um, you know, we discussed oil, we discussed gold, we went over wheat, we discussed corn today. So I'm giving you a variety of outlooks and forecasts from analysts and reports out there in the market so that uh, you can have a better idea of, you know, how broad the scope of products and, and sectors that Tickmill is, uh, is providing on their platform. Uh, with that being said, uh, best of luck everyone this week. Before I sign off, uh, we are looking currently the market right now, the S&P 500 is up 81 points. The Dow is up uh, close to 570. So it's off to a, a uh, positive start. Oil is a little flat. Gold is a little flat. And uh, uh, silver is uh, also about flat. So, but overall the market is up and we'll see how that holds up the rest of the week. Uh, with, uh, with the uh, chatter on the interest rates and inflation. Uh, have a good week, and I will see everyone next week. Take care. Good night.